Merry Christmas. We're so glad to have you with us this Merry evening Christmas. on Christmas Eve. Thank you for taking your time to be with us. And then I hope after this you'll go spend some time with your family. Uh, this evening we'll be singing out of our hymnals. And as you stand and sing with me and worship through music, will you please turn to number 89, O Come All Ye Faithful.
verse 3. So
for this opportunity to gather, to worship, to praise the name of Jesus who was born this day. We thank you for his birth. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his death and his resurrection that saved us from our sins. We love you, Lord, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, have you heard? Baby Jesus, the Messiah has been born. He's just down the road here in the manger, in the stable. You don't look like me. You must not be from around here. Uh, I'll bet you you've come here for the census that Caesar Augustus wanted to have and everybody had to go to their hometown. Well, this is my hometown, Bethlehem, so I live here. Uh, but y'all just don't dress like me uh, here. Uh, I'm a shepherd. I'm not just any shepherd. I'm a shepherd of Bethlehem. Now, that's special because we raise the sheep that are supposed to be used for the sacrifices at the temple. They need to be blemish free uh, so that they can offer the perfect sacrifice at the temple for the people. And I'm a shepherd, my father was a shepherd, my grandfather was a shepherd. Our whole family is a line of shepherds. In fact, my, my little boy is learning to be a shepherd even now. I started out at a real young age uh, learning how to be a shepherd. I was probably, well, probably about as big as you maybe, and, and, and you over here, and right here. Yeah, just about your age when I started learning to be a shepherd. And I would go out with my dad to the field uh, out on the hillsides around Bethlehem where the sheep were raised, and my job was to help take care of the sheep. Now, we camped out under the stars all the time. Camping was fun. I liked doing that and sitting around the fire at night. But I had a few chores, but not too many when I was growing up. Uh, in the morning, I would get up, and I didn't have to make my bed because we slept right on the ground, and we didn't have any blankets. We just had a, a coat that we wrapped around us to sleep on the ground uh, there. And I would get up. I would help to clean up the breakfast dishes, and then I would go around and get some firewood so that we'd have fire to make uh, our food during the day and to have a little fire at night. But the part I liked best is as soon as I could get those done each day, I went and played with the lambs. And we had a great time playing together. And I loved playing hide and seek with them. What I would do is I'd get a stick and I'd get all those lambs looking at me. And then I'd throw that stick and they'd all turn and look that way to see where it was going. And when they turned to look that way, I would run and go hide behind a rock or behind some bushes and just wait for them to try and find me. Because they took, turned back and pretty soon realized I wasn't there. And then they would go around looking until they could find me. Now sometimes the, the sheep dogs joined in too, but they weren't as easy to fool as the sheep. You know, and when I threw the stick for the sheep dogs, they went after that stick like a bullet, grabbed it and came running back to try and give it to me. And even if I got hidden in time, they could find me real quick, because they could smell me good. <laughs> well, after we played fetch and we played tag uh, for a few hours, we got mighty tired. And it was warm out there in the sun, so what we would do is find a nice grassy spot on the hillside, and I would lay down there to take a nap, and all those little lambs would curl up around me, and a couple of the sheep dogs would come and lay down by us just to make sure that we were safe and we would sleep there in the sun. Oh, that was so much fun to do. It was great being out with the men. And then as I grew up, I started having to do more jobs and more jobs until where I got old enough, finally, they gave me a shepherd's staff and they said, all right, you are now an official shepherd. You can't play with the sheep anymore. You have to work. And so that's what I had to do. And the staff is important to a shepherd because with the staff, we defend the sheep. You know, there's bears, there's lions, uh, and, and wolves that would come after the sheep. And so we would use this as a weapon, and we could fight them like this, or I could swing and hit them. And then, if we had one of the sheep that got lost, maybe it wandered off and fell into a hole or, or down the hillside a little bit, and we couldn't get it, and they couldn't get out we would go there and take the shepherd's staff and be able to reach way out like this and put it underneath the sheep and lift them up out of that hole. 
and get them back to safety. Well, that was a that was a, a good a good job to do too. Well, we had been out working, and we got to the end of the day, and we would sit around the fire, and we would have our meal, and the dogs liked to sit around there too, because if we had any meat, they knew they were getting the bones from the, from the meat. But we had our meal, and then after we ate dinner, as it was getting dark, the men would tell us about the Torah. Now, the Torah is the Bible. They would teach us about what was in our Bible. And they would teach us about God and teach us about the Messiah that was supposed to come. And they would tell us why we raised these lambs to be used as sacrifices at the temple. And so we would learn about that. As shepherds, we couldn't go to the temple because they considered us to be unclean. You know, they didn't like the way that we smelled because we were around the sheep all the time. And so they didn't let us at the temple. But our parents told us about God, and so we learned that way. And then we would sit around and we would look up at the sky at the stars, and, and we would see the different stars and we would try and draw lines between the stars to make different objects. And, and there's one up there called Big Dipper. Have you ever seen the Big Dipper up in the sky? You know, you can draw a line between the stars and it makes like a, a water dipper. And if you know what two stars to use out of the Big Dipper, you can use that to find the North Star. And that's important to know too, so that you can travel during the day and know which way that you're going. So we learned a whole lot of things. Well, we had finished up uh, in the afternoon and we were all getting ready for bed. It was getting late. Ezekiel had gone out to watch the sheep for the night. And so we all curled up on the ground to go to sleep. And it was a little bit chilly that night. It wasn't quite warm enough for just just my cloak and so I got one of the sheep dogs to come over and lay next to me they're nice and warm uh, you can almost use them like a blanket to help keep warm and if it's a really cold night you can get two dogs and put one in front and one behind you to help keep keep warm and and I always like that too and the dogs seem to enjoy it yeah so but I was sleeping and about two o'clock in the morning Ezekiel came in from watching the sheep and he shook me and woke me up and said hey You've got to go out and watch the sheep for another four hours yet. Uh, oh man, you know, I can't wait till I get old enough. I don't have to go out and watch the sheep. You know, it's the young guy's job, but I'm still young compared to some of the guys that are out there watching the sheep. So I had to go out and watch the sheep and, and one of the sheep dogs went with me and we went and sat there on the hillside and it was peaceful. The sheep were all bedded down, sleeping. And I sit there just looking up at the stars, just enjoying the pretty night. And all of a sudden I notice this one star up there. It seemed to be getting brighter. It was getting brighter and brighter and it seemed like it was coming right toward me. And I didn't know what was happening. And all of a sudden it got real light all around me. It got so light that the rest of the shepherds that were sleeping, they woke up too and sat up. And pretty soon they were standing looking at this light coming down. And I'll tell you, it takes an awful lot to scare us shepherds, but we were afraid. <laughs> we were too afraid to even run. We didn't know what was happening. And all of a sudden, there was an angel, an angel from God standing in front of us, bright white. And he said, peace be unto you. Don't be afraid, for I bring you tidings of great joy that shall be for all people. For today is born in the city of David, Bethlehem, a child which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign. If you go there, you'll find the baby wrapped up in clothes and lying in a manger. And after he got done telling us that, all of a sudden, there was thousands of angels just all there in the heavens singing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. It was wonderful. And then, poof, they were gone. All we had was the stars in the sky again. It had even got the sheep's attention. They were all standing looking like, what's going on? Well, we talked amongst ourselves and we decided that we need to go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the angel told us about. And so we left a couple of the younger guys to watch the sheep and the rest of us all took and walked into Bethlehem. Now, as I said, we're shepherds. And as shepherds, we know all the good spots to hide and get out of the weather or to, to take uh, comfort from the rain. And so we knew where all the stables were. Uh, we knew where all the caves were that you could go in. And so we started looking. And sure enough, behind the inn of Bethlehem, there in a manger 
was baby Jesus, wrapped up in clothes. Well, we came to the door and, and we looked in and we went, um, could we come in and see the baby? And they said, sure, come on in. And we went in and they said that they were Mary and Joseph. And we said, well, we're shepherds and the, the angels told us to come here. Uh, why are you here? And they said, well, they came down to get registered with the taxes that was, that was taking place and that they had been on the road for over five days traveling from Nazareth to get down there. It, that's over 75 miles to the north. It's a long walk to get there. And Mary was pregnant. And when they arrived, they tried to get a room at the inn, the hotel, and there was no rooms available. And yet the innkeeper said, tell you what, I see that your wife is going to have a baby, so I'll let you use the manger out back. Uh, but you're going to have to put up with the animals uh, to do that. And so they came out back into the stable, and there Mary made a bed in a manger. You know what a manger is? A manger is a square box that they put food in for the animals to eat. And when the animals eat that food, they get spit and drool all over that thing. You know, that's not a very good crib for a baby, but that's all they had. You know, baby Jesus didn't even have a poor man's crude crib to, to, to lay in. He was in a manger, but Mary made it as best she could, and she put some hay in that manger and laid baby Jesus in it, and he was wrapped up, and Mary and Joseph were, were sitting there just looking at that baby. Well, we gathered around to take and look at that baby too, and we realized that this is Jesus, the promised Messiah, the King of Israel. And we wish that we had brought some gifts that were fit for a king. You know, a king should have gifts like gold and frankincense and myrrh. But that would have to be somebody else that could bring those gifts because we couldn't afford that as shepherds. Now we brought some, some sheep's milk and some sheep's cheese that we shared with them. And we stood there looking at baby Jesus. And, and I had brought Rufus, my little lamb with, that I was taking care of. And I had set him down on the ground. And while I was standing there, you know, and watching baby Jesus, I heard this munching. And I looked down, and Rufus was chewing on the hay that was sticking over the side of the manger. He was eating baby Jesus' mattress. I said, Rufus, don't do that. And so he stopped, and he walked up along the manger, and he stopped, and he put his head over top. And he looked down right into baby Jesus' face. Their noses were about that close together looking at each other. And baby Jesus was looking at Rufus. Rufus was looking at baby Jesus. Rufus, a, a, a lamb that was destined to be killed at the temple as a sin sacrifice for the people, was there looking over the edge at baby Jesus. And baby Jesus was looking at him, and it was almost like you could see in baby Jesus' eyes and, and his face that he knew exactly what this lamb was destined for, that he was to be a sacrifice. And it was almost like the lamb was looking at, at baby Jesus, you know, knowing what his future was going to be. Well, we didn't stay too long. You don't stay long in the presence of royalty, and that's what Jesus was. He was a king, the king of the universe, the king of all creation. And so we said our goodbyes, and Mary and Joseph just listened to the stories that we told, and then we left out of there. As we left, we said to one another, you know, we can't keep this good news just to ourselves. we got to tell everybody on the way home what we saw, that baby Jesus is born. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been going around finding people like you all, gathered in groups or, or, or at their houses. And if the lights were out and they were sleeping, we banged down the doors to wake them up so we could tell them too. And baby Jesus is born. And that's exciting. Well, I hope that you know Jesus personally, that you will make him the king of your life, and that you will serve him for all of your days and live with him for all of eternity because he is the Messiah. Well, I've got to get going now. There's, there's a fellow I saw down here on the corner. He, he's wearing a red outfit.
outfit, kind of like yours. <laughs> He's wearing a, a funny red outfit, and he keeps going, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I need to tell him what Jesus is all about. <laughs> Shalom. shepherd this night will be out in the back and I'll be making my way back there too. If you don't have a church home, we want to invite you to join us on Sunday morning. Uh, right here at 1030, we've, we have Pastor Scott as our lead pastor. He's with family tonight up in Kentucky. Uh, but we, we want to be a church home for you if you don't have one. If you have a church home, stay there. We're, we're, not, we're not here to steal members. <laughs> but if you don't have a church home or, or you're looking and in between visiting, Come join us Sunday morning and see what we're about. And let us tell you about Jesus. Because that's what this all is all about. Amen. Christmas is about his birth, yes. But his birth is meaningless if it's without Easter. It's meaningless if it's not about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to share with you. So we're so thankful that you're here. Please talk with us if there's any questions you have. Ron, Ron's in the back. I'll be on my way back there. But we hope you have a Merry Christmas. Safe travels home. Thanks. Spend time with your family. And let me pray and we'll dismiss. Father God, we thank you for the birth of your son. We thank you for this time where we get to gather together and fellowship and worship openly to you. We pray for peace for those that need it, and comfort for those that need it, and a family for those that need it. We love you, Lord. We thank you that you are the great comforter for those that are hurting this Christmas season. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You're dismissed. Thank you.